you will only refer to the YouTube for the solutions to the problems uh, remaining. So probably uh, problems of uh, chapters uh, 22 and 23. That will be for Friday. But the exam will be on uh, Saturday. So I'd like to announce the exam's uh, coverage that will be from chapters 1 to 23. And then for the types of, uh, of uh, the examination, uh, I will give 30 items of uh, multiple choice theory and then uh, 30 multiple choice uh, questions and another 34 uh, problems which you will uh, fill up the answer. So meaning it's just like a fill in the blanks uh, where you are not going to uh, choose the answer among the given uh, amounts. However, this time you have to fill in the blank with uh, an amount or uh, number of shares, no, whatever is required. So that will make it a total of 150 items. Okay, so that will be for the final exams. And uh, of course, I'm going to uh, uh, have remind you, I'm reminding you of the deadline of our uh, uh, project. So that will be on uh, August 6th. So pass through my uh, email at uh, tecrucero at yahoo.com. So all in uh, small letters, T, T, E, Grosero at yahoo.com. Okay, since uh, you said that it's difficult to pass a hard copy, so just uh, pass your uh, work through my email ad. So is there any question before I'll uh, continue with the uh, chapter Ma 19? Yes. Ma with regard with regard bala ma'am sa my fill in the blanks bala para sa finals ma'am. Oh. Ang what if kung value ang imo nga napamangkot di ma'am butangan pa namon sa mga peso sign ka ma mga muna ma'am. Ah uh, oh oh. So if the amount uh, being asked for is value, uh, you have to write uh, the peso sign. But if you are asked for a number of shares, uh, you also write shares. Okay? Okay, now, is there any other question? Any other question? Ula na, okay. Ma'am, so, ma'am, ma oh? ma'am, ma'am, repeat kung negative or positive, butangan namun parenthesis or ang negative sign. A parenthesis. So, so, or you have to write, uh, say, loss ko negative or uh, anyway, you have to write the uh, parenthesis sign if uh, the figure is negative. Okay na. Makwis so, tabuas, ma'am. Uh, any other questions? Makwis kita buas, ma'am. Uh, tomorrow we will have a quiz only for uh, 19 and uh, 20. 19 and 20. 19 is about uh, basic earnings per share. I think I've already given you exam on. Uh, Chapter, oh, wala pang 18. I have not given you exam on 18. The last time I gave was only on 16. Ano to ganun niya? Tag ko last time, ah. Uh, single entry, uh, cash and accrual, and correction Error. of errors. So only up to chapter 16. 
I have not given you chapter 19, uh, 18. Wala. So, for tomorrow, I will just give you 18 and uh, 18, 19, and 20. 18, 19, and 20. So, probably, I can give one more exam uh, before the finals. Uh, I'll just see. It may be on Thursday. Okay? So, the test tomorrow will include chapters uh, 18, 19, and 20. Again, that's good for 10 uh, questions times 2. So, it will be 200. Uh, it will be 20 points. Uh, our quizzes now, unlike during the two uh, semesters, uh, we have reached as uh, many as uh, 350 points or 400. Now, this time, uh, we cannot reach even uh, 200. The fact that uh, I have uh, given quizzes only up to 20, up to 10. So anyway, since uh, it's uh, only good for 25%, just like your midsummer exam. Okay, na? So is there any other question before I'll uh, start? Ma'am, ang email address, ma'am, para sa project, Ang nakabutang sa canvas, ano gani? Ang email address Oo, ko ma'am? T-T-E-Crucero at yahoo.com T, all in Thank small you, letters without gap. T-E-Crucero at yahoo.com Small letters. I think I have it in uh, the canvas. Kila? Yes, oh, sige. Why not question? Okay. Now, before I'll uh, begin with the multiple choice uh, problems in chapter 19, now let's uh, be reminded of the formula in computing the basic earnings per share. Since uh, the basic earnings per share is only applicable to the ordinary shares. So we just divide your net income divided by the ordinary shares. Ma'am, last na lang, ma'am. Yes? Ang sa ano, ma'am, for finals exams, oh. um, pariho man siya sa midsummer, ma'am, nga magwa da yun, ang correct answer. Ang oh, oo. Oh, oh. okay. Since uh, we type in the canvas, uh, there's already an answer that you have to to answer. There's already an answer that you have to uh, to encode. So in that case, uh, usually the instruction is uh, the first answer is your final answer. By the way, your exam will. Uh, how many hours will I give you? Three Japan, ma'am. Huh? Three, three. Three hours. Would that be okay? Three hours. Yes. Uh, last midsummer, I gave you three hours, but many were able to finish in two hours or even less than two hours. So I believe uh, that was more than enough, the time needed. So can you, uh, okay, uh, if I'll give you only three hours. Three hours? Yes. One hundred fifty items. So we are adding uh, fifty more, as uh, compared to the midsummer, since uh, our final exam is uh, given thirty-five percent. So would it be okay uh, for you if I'll give you three hours? Would that be okay? One hundred fifty points, Shabi, ma'am. Oh, oh. one hundred fifty. And uh, uh, the composition, the one that I have just uh, told you. So would that be okay? And what is the time to give the exam? Can I still give it 9 to 12? Just like oh, our midsummer, 
then how about those who also have classes uh, 11 to 1? Any, uh, any conflict? Anyway, I will uh, finalize the date. So last uh, midsummer, those who had uh, uh, classes 11 to 1 with uh, Professor Haba, they asked uh, the teacher if uh, they can uh, miss the class and uh, join my exam, and they were granted. But I am not sure with regards to uh, the final exams. So I will first check what will be the time. But uh, with regards to the number of hours, it will already be final. It's three hours. And um, uh, um, 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 150, I, um, 150 points. Ma'am, pira ga nika items, sorry. 150. 150 because uh, 30 multiple choice theory. So that's times one. And then okay, the multiple sweet. choice uh, problems, 30. That will still be uh, times two. So mm -hmm. 60 and 30, 90. Then the fill in the blanks problems, 30 times two. So again, that's... Uh, 60, making it a total of 150 points. Okay. Is that okay? So that will be good for three hours. Okay, Nana. Okay. So no more problem. Okay, na. So uh, we now begin with the uh, chapter 19 with the multiple choice uh, problems because the straight problems we already had this last meeting so uh, just to remind you of the formula in uh, computing for the basic earnings per share so we now divide net income over the outstanding ordinary shares and uh, the net income is to be computed by deducting first the dividends on the preference share. And that if the preference share is cumulative, whether there is declaration or not, the dividends for the current year is deducted from net income. However, if the preference share is non-cumulative, we only allow a deduction applicable to one year if there is declaration. And that we have to involve the use of your uh, average or the weighted average outstanding shares in cases when there are numerous transactions affecting your outstanding shares. So we now have your earnings per share. Uh, we begin with the uh, multiple choice uh, problem number nine. Number nine, the question is, what amount should be reported as basic earnings per share? Okay, so we have to compute for uh, the net income to be given to the ordinary shares. So we have now the net income given for the current year of 750,000. Then we have the preferred dividends uh, equal to 120,000 dividend on the preference share of 120,000. So the net income to the ordinary share is 630,000 divided by 60,000 ordinary shares. So we now get the basic EPS of 10.50. Then uh, that's letter A. We go to 19 gas 10. The question is again, what is the amount to be reported as basic earnings per share? So this time, uh, we have your shares issued and outstanding. 
the ordinary share capital of 200,000 and the preference share capital of 50,000. Uh, we have now the ordinary shares on January 1, 2020 of 200,000 shares. Then on October 1, 2020, the entity issued a 10% share dividend on ordinary shares and paid the annual cash dividend of 200,000 on preference shares. Though the preference shares are said to be non-cumulative and non-participating and at the same time non-convertible. So going back to the computation of the total uh, outstanding shares ordinary, we have now the January 120 ordinary shares of 200,000 and then we add the stock dividends given on October 1, 2020 that's equal to 10% of 200,000. So we have 20,000. The total outstanding shares ordinary is 220,000. Okay? Now, uh, if the net income given is 1,920,000 and we deduct the prefer, uh, preference dividend of 200,000, Net income to the ordinary shares is 1,720,000 divided by 220,000 shares. So the basic EPS is 7.82. That's now for uh, letter D. 7.82 or letter D. Now for the rest of the problems, now they involve similar formula and uh, similar uh, computations to the extent that uh, we already involved in the illustrative problem, uh, computations of uh, the weighted average number of shares and we also involve computation of theoretical value of a right. So for the rest of the problems, I will just give you the letter answers to the multiple choice and so I can proceed to chapter 20 about the diluted earnings per share. And again, uh, take note that we are still in module number 12 about uh, book value per share, earnings per share, and that includes diluted earnings per share. Now for 19, that's 11, the letter answer is A. Number 12 is B as in boy, 13 dog, 14 A, 15 C, 16, question number one, boy, number two, boy, 17, boy, 18, boy, 19 A, 20 boy 21 question number 1a number 2a 22c 23c 24 boy 25a 26 question number 1 boy number 2 boy 27 dog 28 boy now for 29 uh, the following, number one dog, number two boy, number three C, number four C, five dog, six C, seven boy, eight C, nine C, and ten dog. Four, number 29. Then for problem 19, that's 30. Number one, boy. Number two, dog. Number three, boy. Number four, A. Five, C. Six, A. Seven, boy. Eight, dog. Nine, A. Ten, boy. Okay? So those are the answers for chapter 19, multiple choice. And uh, I will now go to 
chapter 20 for the illustrations of uh, especially uh, straight problems and some multiple choice. Uh, by the way, I am uh, recording this uh, lecture for uh, the other two classes. So they will just refer to the YouTube. Okay, now with regards to diluted earnings uh, per share. In diluted earnings uh, per share, we have to identify potential ordinary shares. We have to identify uh, the ordinary shares that may be converted or you can refer to a financial instrument or other contract that may entitle the holder to ordinary shares. A potential ordinary share is a financial instrument that represents future issuance of ordinary shares. And we have three types of uh, instruments that may be considered as potential ordinary shares. One, convertible bonds payable. Two, convertible preference share. And three, share options and warrants. So again, convertible bonds payable and preference shares and options and warrants. Now in this connection, we have to distinguish between the terms dilution and anti-dilution. Uh, dilution arises when the inclusion of the potential ordinary shares uh, decreases the basic earnings per share or increases the basic loss per share. Here, the potential ordinary shares are considered to be dilutive. Now, it mentions that dilution arises when the inclusion of potential ordinary shares. What we mean by inclusion is we have to consider the potential ordinary shares as addition to our shares outstanding. So as if, as if the convertible bonds will be converted, the convertible preference shares will be converted, and the share options and warrants will be exercised. So that's when we talk about inclusion. Okay? Um, so if the inclusion of the potential ordinary shares will decrease the basic earnings per share, and will increase the net basic loss per share. Now, we say that these inclusions are considered to be with dilutive effects. And the securities are considered to be dilutive. On the other hand, yes? Ma'am, ang may question, i-confirm ko lang ma'am, ang sa 19-27 nga problem, ano gani ma'am ang letter answer? 19-27 Problem 27 Opo. Yes ma'am Dog ma'am? Ma Oo Now, by the way, if you have any questions uh, just uh, tomorrow you ask me tomorrow ha? Huh? Uh, suktan nyo lang all your questions so I will just continue lecturing today uh, since naka-record ako for uh, the YouTube uh, this afternoon so okay, please uh, try to mark whatever questions you have and uh, so I can answer them tomorrow since we will have a face-to-face discussion tomorrow. Okay lang? Okay? Yes ma'am. Oh, let's Happy continue. Ma Thank you. Now this time, uh, let's try to consider anti-dilution. This arises when the inclusion of the potential 
ordinary shares will increase the basic earnings per share or will decrease the basic loss. So in other words, the effects will be the reverse of the inclusion of the dilutive securities. So the securities are considered to be anti-dilutive if the inclusion of these securities will increase the basic EPS or will decrease the basic loss per share. And we consider them as anti-dilutive and thus we are going to ignore them in computing the diluted earnings per share. In other words, if the securities are considered as anti-dilutive, the fact that they will increase the basic earnings per share and decrease the net loss per share, we are going to ignore them or disregard them in the computations of the diluted earnings per share. However, if the basic earnings per share, if the effects will be to decrease the basic earnings per share and increase the basic loss per share, considering that the securities are dilutive, we are going to include them in computing the diluted earnings per share. Now, these uh, two are very important. I'm trying to emphasize them, uh, though we will be using them in uh, our solving of the straight problems. Okay, now what then will be our processes to be used and uh, how about diluted earnings per share as we will compare this with basic earnings per share how do we distinguish the computation of the diluted earnings per share is based on the as if scenario so you think of it as if the convertible bonds payable is converted into ordinary shares. As if the convertible preference share is converted into ordinary shares. And as if the options and warrants are exercised. So you just say as if, then what are you going to do? As if you will convert. So, you are going to assume that you now convert and so whatever will be the effects, your ordinary shares will be increasing, but what will be the effects of this uh, inclusion on your uh, basic earnings per share? Uh, because, as stated, if it will decrease the basic earnings per share or increase the basic loss, then you have to continue with the inclusion. But if they have the reverse effects, then you have to ignore or exclude. Okay, so we have now your computations of the diluted earnings per share. Uh, this is uh, possible when the capital structure of an entity is complex in the sense that it consists of uh, ordinary shares and potential ordinary shares. So the computation of your diluted earnings per share is quite complicated. For this uh, purpose, we are trying to compare earnings per share, basic with diluted earnings per share. So for our illustrative problems, will you refer to 20 that's one? We are going to answer 20 that's one and three and four and five. And then to follow will be your multiple choice problems.
Okay, 20, that's one. Uh, requirements are compute for the basic earnings per share and two diluted earnings per share. Now, the company reported the following at year end. Bonds payable, ordinary share capital, and net income. The bonds are convertible into ordinary shares in the ratio of 10 ordinary shares for each 1,000 pesos bond. The income tax rate is 30%. Now, uh, this is why uh, we consider the problem as uh, complex, the fact that we are including here a convertible bonds and for us to determine diluted earnings per share. So first we compute for the basic earnings per share. Net income of 1,730,000. We just divide it by the ordinary shares of 50,000. So your basic earnings per share is 34.60. 34.60. Whereas in number two, we now use diluted earnings per share. So we have to involve computation of adjusted net income. And adjusted net income is the sum of the given amount of net income add interest on bonds payable. Now we assume that the bonds payable uh, this time will be considered as converted to uh, ordinary shares. So repeat, net income 1,730,000. Then we have now interest on bonds payable, 10% multiplied by the face of 1 million and you multiply that by 70%. 70% is already net of income tax. The income tax rate is 30%. So uh, in other words, we will have the effect we understand that if we have interest expense, that will reduce the amount of income tax payable. So 1,730,000, we add interest on bonds payable 10% times 1 million times 70%. So we have 70,000. So we now get the adjusted net income equal to 1,800,000. 1,800,000. Okay, that's your adjusted net income. So computing for the diluted earnings per share, we now get 1,800,000 divided by 60,000. Divided by 60,000. So that gives us 30. That is your diluted earnings per share. Okay, our basic EPS is equal to 34.60. Uh, basic EPS, no? So in other words, it's higher than the diluted earnings per share. Diluted earnings per share is only 30. In other words, the inclusion, the inclusion of uh, our as if we are converting the bonds payable into ordinary shares did not reduce the basic earnings per share. It's still 34.60 the diluted earnings per share is only 30. And by the way, in computing the diluted earnings per share, we divided 1.8 million by 60,000 shares. How did we get 60,000 shares? We already applied as if scenario. 
to the original ordinary shares of 50,000. We added 10,000 as if the bonds payable of 1 million were was already converted to ordinary shares. By dividing 1 million by 1,000 and multiply it by 10, we now get 10,000 shares. The problem stated that the bonds are convertible into ordinary shares in the ratio of 10 ordinary shares for each 1,000 bond. So if we assume that the bonds payable are now converted into ordinary shares, we will be adding 10,000 ordinary shares taken by dividing 1 million by 1,000. So that gives us 1,000 times 10. So we are adding 10,000 uh, shares. So now we have your uh, computation of the diluted earnings per share. The shares in our denominator is 60,000. The diluted earnings per share is only 30, while the basic earnings per share is 34.60. Okay, so we have now your uh, problem number one. We go to problem number three, basic earnings per share and also diluted earnings per share. On January 1, 2020, Simple Company provided the following information. Ordinary share capital of uh, 100 par, 100,000 shares. So the total par is 10 million. 12% months payable issued at face amount. Uh, each 1,000 band is convertible into 20 ordinary shares. So the face value of the bonds is 4 million. On April 1, 2020, bonds with face amount of 3 million were actually converted into ordinary shares. The net income for the current year was 2,320,000 and the income tax rate is 30%. So we now compute for number one, the basic earnings per share. Okay, computing for the basic earnings per share, our formula is still net income divided by the outstanding shares. If there's a need for us to determine the average outstanding shares, then we have to do so. Okay. In January 1, we have the number of shares of ordinary 100,000 times 12 months. So we now get 1,200,000. On April 1, we assume that the bonds were converted. So how were the bonds converted? Of the 4 million face value bonds, only 3 million of this. Uh, 3 million was converted. So if we now have the conversion for every 1,000 of these bonds, uh, this conversion ratio is 20 ordinary shares. So we now divide 3 million by 1,000. It gives us 3,000. And multiply it by 20, so uh, we get the amount of uh, 60,000, okay? Converting it to uh, 60,000 shares, okay? And we only involve nine months because, uh, nine months because the conversion occurred only on April 1, okay? So on April 1, we have the computation, of the number of shares, ordinary 3,000 times 20 times 9 months. 
So we now get the uh, amount or the peso months of 540,000. Adding it to 1,200,000, we now get the total of 1,740,000. And the average number of shares of ordinary is 1,740,000 divided by 12. Divided by 12. So that gives us 145,000. 145,000. That is your average number of shares. And now computing for the basic earnings per share, we now get 2,320,000. That's the amount of net income divided by 145,000 shares. That's the average. So we get the basic earnings per share equal to 16. Okay, equal to... 16 uh, pesos. That's the basic uh, earnings per share. Okay, now we go to the computation of the diluted earnings per share. Uh, if we have now your ordinary shares outstanding equals 100,000, then ordinary shares issued through actual conversion is 3,000 times 20. So we have 60,000 shares. 60,000 shares. Then we add assumed uh, conversion to ordinary shares of the remaining bonds. Uh, take note that our total face value of the bonds was 4 million. And we converted only 3 million. So in other words, there is a remainder of 1 million. If we now assume that we convert this 1 million bonds to ordinary shares, so we now divide 1 million by 1,000 times 20. Assume conversion of the remaining bonds Two ordinary shares, 1 million divided by 1,000 times 20. That gives 20,000 shares. Okay? So the total ordinary shares for the purpose of computing the diluted earnings per share is 180,000 with the as-if scenario that even though the 1 million face value of bonds were not yet converted, but we assume as if these bonds were already converted. So the total shares ordinary that we have to use in terms of computing the diluted earnings per share is equal to 180,000 shares. So we have the, initially we have the actual bond conversion, but uh, the conversion occurred only on January, on April 1. But the actual or the remainder of 1 million, again, we assume that the, as if they will be converted. Okay, uh, since the bonds are outstanding on January 1, 2020, the ordinary shares are assumed to be issued through the actual bond conversion. And these are all considered to be outstanding on January 1, 2020. Assumed to be outstanding on January 1, 2020. Okay, now the formula in computing diluted earnings per share. We again divide our net income by the number of shares. And we have already computed the number of shares uh, at 180,000. 
Now, computing for the net income. The given amount of net income before the as-if scenario will be considered. The net income is 2,320,000. 2,320,000. Then we add the interest on bonds actually converted. Why do we add? Why do we add? Normally, interest expense is uh, an expense. So normally, we deduct. However, because this time, we assume that the bonds are already converted or will already be converted. So in other words, there will be no more interest because we are now having ordinary shares. So that's why we are adding back interest expense. First, we have the interest on the 3 million bonds at 12%. So that will be uh, multiplied by 3 over 12 because the bonds were, were actually converted on April 1. So interest on bonds actually converted 3 million times 12% times 3 over 12, times 3 over 12. That was the period when the bonds were not yet converted. So we multiply it by 3 over 12. So we get 90,000. And interest on the remaining bonds of 1 million, we multiply it by 12%. It's good for one year, as if they were converted. So we have the amount of 120,000, okay? Now, how about on the bonds that were converted? Why do we consider only three over 12? From January 1 to April 1, the bonds are not yet converted. So in other words, uh, the company, assumes now that the bonds were already converted and assume that there will be no more interest to be paid. So you add back your interest. So the total addition due to interest is 210,000. 210,000, we add it to 2,320,000, no? But uh, before adding, we can get the net effect to interest if we have to deduct income tax. So repeat, net income, 2,320,000. And then add indent, interest on bonds actually converted, uh, 90,000. Interest on the remaining bonds that are not yet converted, 120,000. The total interest is 210,000 less the income tax applicable of 30%. So that is 63,000. 63,000 deducted from 210,000. The net effect is 147,000. 147,000 add to 2,320,000. We now get your adjusted net income. Adjusted net income is 2,467,000. Two million four hundred sixty-seven thousand. That is your adjusted net income. And so computing for the diluted earnings per share, diluted earnings per share is uh, dividing two million four hundred sixty-seven thousand by a one hundred eighty thousand shares. 2,467,000 divided by 
thousand shares. That gives us the diluted EPS of thirteen point seventy one. Thirteen pesos and seventy one centavos. Thirteen point seventy one. Okay, so we have now the answers to twenty dash three. Then we go to 20-4. Again, we are required for the basic earnings per share and the diluted earnings per share. So computing now for the basic earnings per share, we divide 2 million, 2 million our net income by 100,000 shares. So 100,000 ordinary shares outstanding during the entire year. Our basic EPS is 20. The basic EPS is 20. Okay, for number two, computing for the diluted earnings per share. First, we have to begin from net income 2 million. Net income, 2 million. And we have the interest on bonds. And the bonds since January 2020, there have been 800,000 of 5% convertible loan in issue. The terms of conversion for every 10,000 nominal amounts are. So we have now a different conversion rates. Now for uh, June 30, 2020, it will be 120 ordinary shares for every 10,000. June 30, 2021, it will be 150 ordinary shares. And June 30, 2022, 140 ordinary shares. No conversion has taken place during the current year, which is 2020. The interest on the convertible loan is allowable for a tax relief of 30%. So we now go back and compute for diluted earnings per share. Net income, original amount, 2 million. Then we add back interest on bonds. 800,000 times 5% times 70%. That is now net of tax rate. Okay? So 800,000 times 5% times 70% is 28,000. Then we add 2 million and 28,000 giving us the adjusted net income of 2,028,000. And also compute for the adjusted number of ordinary shares. Ordinary shares outstanding initially was 100,000. Then we add the assumed uh, ordinary shares conversion through conversion of bonds on most favorable terms. So there is already an agreement that the bonds may be converted to ordinary shares. So the most favorable terms, you are given the various terms. So 800,000, we divide it by 10,000 and multiply it by 150. 150 is the most favorable term. That's the highest rate. Uh, assumed ordinary shares through conversion of bonds on most favorable terms. So most favorable is 150 ordinary shares. So repeat. Divide 800,000, that's the face value of the loan. Divide it by 10,000, that's the rate per 10,000. The company will receive 150 uh, ordinary shares. So 
the assumed ordinary shares to be issued upon conversion of the loan is 12,000. So repeat, divide 800,000 by 10,000 multiplied by 150. So we get 12,000. The total ordinary shares after uh, the as if conversion, the total ordinary shares is 112,000. So computing now for the diluted earnings per share, we divide the adjusted net income of 2,028,000 by 112,000 uh, assumed total ordinary shares. So we now get 18.11, 18 pesos and 11 centavos. Now take note that in all the three problems, 20 does one, does three, and uh, does four, the basic earnings per share are uh, higher, no? The basic earnings per share uh, here in all three problems are higher than basic earnings per share as compared to the diluted earnings per share. In other words, the securities, the convertible bonds assumed to be converted are considered to be diluted securities. Are considered to be diluted securities. Diluted in the sense that uh, using them in the as if scenario that they were converted to ordinary shares did not reduce, did not decrease the basic earnings per share. Because in all the three problems, the basic earnings per share, the three are higher than the diluted earnings per share. Now we go to uh, problem 20 does five. This will be the last uh, straight problem. And then after this, I'll move on to uh, some multiple choice problems up to 11 o'clock. Okay, in 20 does five again, we are asked to determine the basic earnings per share and the diluted earnings per share. Net income is 2,850,000 for 2020. We deduct the preferred dividends uh, and the preferred dividends here, here is 24 per share. The entity pay dividends of 24 per preference share. And we have now the total of 10,000 preference shares. Take note that these preference shares are convertible. But anyway, in computing the earnings per share, our uh, rule is from net income, we first deduct the dividends on the preferred. And actually, the company paid dividends on the preferred at 24 per share. So we deduct uh, 10,000 shares times 24, we did that, 240,000 preferred dividends, giving us the net income available to ordinary shares of 2,610,000. And the basic earnings per share is 2,610,000 divided by 90,000 ordinary shares given above. So the basic earnings per share is 29 pesos. And computing for the diluted earnings per share, we have uh, now the ordinary, uh, the net income is still 2,850,000. We cannot deduct 
we cannot add a unit, any interest expense because we do not have convertible bonds or convertible loans. We only add interest expense if we have convertible bonds or loans. This time, we have convertible reference shares and we know that they do not bear interest. They are only entitled to dividends but not to interest. So our net income to be used as numerator in computing the diluted EPS is still 2,850,000. But we have to compute for the adjusted number of ordinary shares. The ordinary shares outstanding given initially was 90,000. And then we add the potential ordinary shares if we convert the preferred stocks. If we convert the preference share capital is convertible into 20 ordinary shares. So we add 90,000 and 20,000 giving us the total um, ordinary shares if we now apply the as if scenario as if we already convert the preferred stock to ordinary shares so we now divide uh, 2 million 850,000 by 110,000 ordinary shares giving 25 pesos and 91 centavos that is your diluted earnings per share 25.91 25.91 okay so that's all for the straight problems and i will be discussing some uh, multiple choice problems uh, only some but the rest i will just give you the letter answers so we now begin with 20-11. What amount should be reported as diluted earnings per share? Now the company had 1.2 million of ordinary shares outstanding on January 1 and also December 31. In connection with the acquisition of a subsidiary in June 2019, the entity is required to issue 50,000 additional ordinary shares on July 1, 2021 to the former owners of the subsidiary. The entity paid 200,000 in preference dividends in 2020 and reported income of 3.4 million for the year. Now let's try to determine the shares, the total ordinary shares to be used in computing the diluted earnings per share. So the ordinary shares outstanding, 1.2 million. However, the ordinary shares to be issued in the acquisition of the subsidiary is 50 thousand even though the shares will be issued on july 1 2021 however the subsidiary was acquired earlier so we now get the total ordinary shares of one million two hundred fifty thousand and compute for the net income the net income is 3.4 million we deduct the preference dividend paid during the year of 200,000. The net income to ordinary shareholders is 3.2 million. So now computing for the diluted earnings per share, 3.2 million divided by 1,250,000. That gives 2. 56 and 2.56 here is letter 
D as in dog. 2012, what amount should be reported as diluted earnings per share? The company had 200,000 ordinary shares with 20 par and 20,000 shares of uh, 100 par, 6% cumulative convertible preference share capital outstanding for the entire year. Each preference share is convertible into five ordinary shares. The net income for the current year was 840,000. Again, we do not need any adjustment to net income for interest expense because we have no convertible bonds or loans. All that we have here is your convertible preference share. So computing for the adjusted ordinary shares, the ordinary shares outstanding 200,000 uh, here for 200,000 ordinary shares. The ordinary shares to be issued for conversion as if we convert, as if we convert. So uh, preference share capital, uh, convertible into five ordinary shares. So the original number of preference shares is 20,000. We multiply each by five, giving us the ordinary shares. Uh, if we use the yes, if scenario, we are now having 100,000. So 200,000 add 100,000. Assumed conversion of the preference that gives us the basic EPS equal to um, if you now use a diluted earnings per share, we divide 840 diluted na, 840,000 divided by 300,000. 840,000. Uh, divided by uh, 300,000. So you now get the diluted earnings per share equal to 2 pesos and 80 centavos. 2 pesos and 80 centavos. Okay? So we have now your uh, 20 does 12. 20 does 12. Okay. Uh, we have uh, problem 13. Okay. Problem 13. Here. What amount should be reported as basic earnings per share? And number two, to be reported as diluted earnings per share. In the case of uh, here, we have uh, January 1, 2020, 100,000 ordinary shares are given. In addition, on January 1, 2020, the company issued 10,000 convertible cumulative 5% preference shares with 100 bar. These preference shares were converted on September 1, 2020. Each was converted into six ordinary shares. The preference dividends for the entire year were paid in full before the conversion. The entity has no other potentially dilutive securities. The net income for the year was two million. So let's now compute for the net income. January 1, uh, our net income was 2 million. Then we have to deduct the preference dividend equal to uh, 1 million. 1 million is uh, 10,000 shares times 100. 10,000 shares times 100. That's your part for preference shares. So the amount of dividends multiplied by 1 million times 5% is 50,000. 
the preference dividend. So net income to ordinary is 1,950,000. So computing for the basic EPS will be to uh, divide the net income by the adjusted number of ordinary shares. So what is now the adjusted number of ordinary shares? Only for the purpose of computing the basic EPS. The shares outstanding on January 1 is 100,000. On September 1, there was an actual conversion of the preference shares. So we have now the 10,000 preference shares converted at 6. So that will be 6 uh, stated was converted into 6 ordinary shares. And we multiply it by 4 over 12. 4 over 12 counting September, October, November, and December. So that is the actual conversion period. 10,000 shares of uh, preferred times 6. So actually there will be 60,000 uh, ordinary shares to be added. However, the period uh, since conversion is only 4 months. So you now get 10,000 times 6 times 4 over 12 is 20,000. So that the total uh, average, I mean, number of shares of ordinary for the purpose of computing the basic earnings per share is 120,000 shares. So the basic EPS is 1,950,000 divided by 120,000 shares is 16 pesos and 25 centavos. 16 pesos and 25 centavos. Okay? Then we have now your uh, second requirement. So by the way, number one requirement is the as in do. Number two requirement, uh, diluted EPS. So we now compute for uh, the net income uh, to be given to uh, to be used for our numerator, the amount of net income to be used is 2 million. No adjustments because there is no interest expense. Okay, so we only compute now for the adjusted number of ordinary shares. January 1 outstanding shares, 100,000. Then we have the conversion on September 1. The actual conversion was on September 1. September 1, that's 10,000 shares times 6. So if we have now the actual conversion, that's 60,000. So the total ordinary shares is 160,000. The ordinary shares issued on September 1, we do not need to get the average, unlike in computing the basic EPS. For purposes of computing the diluted EPS, the converted preference shares converted on September 1, we do not need to get the average because the preference shares are already outstanding. They are outstanding since the beginning of the year. They are outstanding since the beginning of the year. So if we uh, use the as if scenario, meaning uh, since the beginning of the year, we assume that they were already outstanding. So computing for the diluted earnings per share, we now divide 2 million by 160,000 shares. We divide 2 million by 
160,000 shares. We now get 12.50. We now get 12.50. That's letter A. Next, problem number 14. At the beginning of current year, Boraca Company had 480,060 peso par value of ordinary shares and 100,000, 10%. 100 par value, convertible, cumulative, preference shares, outstanding. The preference shares are convertible into 100,000 ordinary shares before share dividend and share split. During the current year, the following transactions affected ordinary shares. In February 1, Issued 120,000 shares. On March 1, issued a 20% share dividend. On May 1, acquired 100,000 treasury shares. On June 1, issued a 3 for 1 split. October 1, reissued 60,000 treasury shares. The net income was 35 million and the entity did not declare dividend on the preference shares. However, the preference shares are said to be cumulative. Okay, one, what is the number of average ordinary shares outstanding? So we have to compute now beginning January 1. January 1, the number of shares outstanding was 480,000, okay? Then uh, we use 1.2, 1.2 times 3 times 12 over 12. So 480,000 times 1.2 times 3 times 12 over 12. So 12 over 12, counting from uh, January 1 to December 31. So we now get 1,728,000. 1,728,000. Next, on February 1, issued 120,000 shares. So on February 1, 120,000 shares. Then again, we multiply it by 1.2 times 3 times 11.12. 11.12 counting from February 1 to December 31. Now, why did I multiply uh, the shares by 1.2. Uh, we will have the cumulative effect of the share dividend. The share dividend was 20%. So that's why it will have an effect on the shares that have been issued. Since March 1 was the issuance of the 20% share dividend. So this will affect the January 1 shares as well as the February 1 uh, shares issued. So that's why 1.2 or 120%. Then why do we need to multiply by 3? We need to multiply by 3 because on June 1, there was a 3 for 1 shares split. This is split up, so one share will have three. And even though the issuance of the split was on June 1, but this will affect the shares already existing. So this will affect the shares on January 1 and on February 1. Okay, so that's why we multiply the original shares by 1.2 and by 3. Next, 
On May 1, the company acquired 100,000 treasury shares. The 100,000 treasury shares issued on May 1 uh, was already acquired, acquired treasury shares are acquired. This 100,000 was already after the share dividends were uh, recognized. So on May 1, we just multiply 100,000 uh, treasury shares by three because the split occurred after May 1. So 100,000, we multiply it by three and times eight over 12, counting from May 1 to December 31. Again, we do not need to multiply this by 1.2 because this 100,000 shares was already after adding the 20% stock dividends. So included nadiri, ang effect sa 20% stock dividends. So repeat on May 1, 100,000 treasury shares times 3 times 8 over 12. So that will be 200,000 negative. That will be 200,000 negative. 100,000 times 3 times 8 over 12. Negative 200,000 because the company acquired treasury shares. Then on June 1, it showed a 3 for 1 split. We have already uh, uh, recognized the split and have its effect on the shares already existing. Okay, so finally on October 1, the company reissued 60,000 shares. By reissued, it means that the treasury shares were again issued, were again sold. So they are again outstanding. So we now have 60,000 shares times 3 over 12, counting from October 1 to December 31. 60,000 times 3 over 12 or 15,000. So I'll repeat, 1,728,396,000, negative 200,000, and positive 15,000. The weighted average outstanding shares is 1,939,000. One million nine hundred thirty-nine thousand. This is now your answer to number one is letter A. Then in number two, compute for the basic earnings per share. Start with net income of thirty-five million. We deduct the preferred dividends equal to ten percent times. Uh, 10 million, so that will be 1 million. Why do we deduct the preferred dividends when, as stated, there is no declaration? As stated, did not declare dividends on the preferred shares. But our policy or our rule is that uh, from the net income, we deduct the preferred dividends to the extent that the preferred dividends is or the preferred shares are cumulative. So whether there is or there is no dividend declaration, we have to give the current year's dividend to the preferred shares. So even if there is no declaration, but the fact that the preferred shares are cumulative. So we now deduct the preference dividend from net income of 35 million minus 1 million. The net income to be given to ordinary shares is 34 million. And computing for the basic EPS, 34 million divided by 1,939,000. 
average uh, weighted average outstanding shares. So the basic EPS is 17.53. That's now the answer to number two is the Asin dog. Then in number three, what amount should be reported as diluted earnings? To the average outstanding shares of 1,939,000, we are going to add the average potential ordinary shares. Since the preference shares are said to be uh, convertible, convertible to uh, ordinary shares, and they will be converted uh, for uh, ordinary shares that will end up with 100,000 times 1.2 times 3. In other words, the preference shares are convertible into 100,000 ordinary shares before share dividend and share split. So if 100,000 ordinary shares if we reflect the share dividends, that will be times 1.2. And we reflect the stock split, we multiply that by 3. So 100,000 times 1.2 times 3 is 360,000. The average potential ordinary shares if the preference will be converted. So the total ordinary shares is 2,299,000. That will be the denominator. So dividing 35 million, that's your original net income. 35 million divided by 2,299,000. We get 15 point. 22 15.22 Mam ano gani mam ang sabat sa number 1 mam Ano Ang sa number 1 mam Number 1 letter answer 20-14 20-14 uh, number 1 A 193 number 2 dog and number three is A. Okay? Now, I'll continue uh, giving you the letter answers for the rest of the problems uh, for chapter 20. So, by tomorrow, uh, we will already involve chapter 21, the diluted earnings per share. And uh, if you can begin with chapter 22. Okay, 20 does 15, letter C. 20 does 16, B as in boy. 17, A. 18, C. 19, A. 19, number 1, A. Number 2, A. Number 20 is A. Ining 20 nga ini, ang mugid ni ang very important. So anyway, let me go back afterwards so 20 uh, so I can give you the explanation. 20 is uh, uh, boy. 20 is boy. 21A 22C 21A, 22C, 23 boy, 24A, 25 number one boy, number 2A, 26 dog, okay, 27 number one C, number 2A, number three boy, number four boy, number five boy. 28, number 1A, number 2C, number 3A, number 4 boy, number 5C. 29, number 1 dog, number 2 dog, number 3 boy, number 4C, 
number 5C, number 6A, number 7 dog, number 8A, number 9 boy, number 10C. Now will you go back to 20-20? 20-20. 20 20? 20 20? Why is the answer A? Uh, why is the answer boy and not A? The company issued 20 million 7% convertible bonds at face amount. Each 1,000 bond is convertible into one ordinary share. No bonds were converted during the year. The entity had 200,000, 100 par value of ordinary shares outstanding during the year. The net income was 6 million and the income tax rate was 30%. Now, I'll just give you an idea that if you will compute for uh, the basic earnings per share, it's 30. It's 30. But if you will compute no, the diluted earnings per share, it's 30.9 or 30.90. Pero ang mga basic is 30 lang. Ang mga diluted earnings per share in the initial computation was 30.90. Since the diluted earnings per share is higher than the basic EPS, which is only 30, therefore the convertible bonds are considered to be anti-diluted and ignored. At ito bala kaina ang ato niya lesson na if uh, the securities, uh, the effect will be to reduce or to decrease the basic earnings per share, then you have to ignore the securities because even though they are convertible, but they are anti-diluted because the basic earnings per share is reduced and the diluted earnings per share originally computed is higher. So we still use the basic earnings per share and therefore ignore the convertible bonds because they are anti-diluted. So you are, that's why I'm trying to explain, uh, but you need the initial computations. Uh, you do it. So the answer in number 20 is still 30, that's B as in bull. The basic earnings per share. Okay, that's enough for today. So for tomorrow, aside from the uh, letter answers to chapter 20, now will you do them or compute them? And uh, you now go to chapter 21, it's still uh, diluted earnings per share. It's a very short chapter. So by tomorrow, we will solve. Your assignment will be 21-1, 21-3. And uh, you do all the multiple choice problems. And I'm going to begin with chapter 22. Tomorrow for the hyperinflation. Okay, uh, now we end. Uh, God bless us all. Okay, once again, I'm